All right, so let's talk about some of the astrology going on for 2024. Right now it's May 24th, 2024. Didn't even plan that, but I like that. 24 is a big theme for this year, you know? Yeah, it's interesting because 24, um, 24, if you, if you look at Gematria, you know, if you know that, then X is the 24th letter. And what's really fascinating is that 2024 was the year that that solar eclipse created an X across the United States. The first line was created from the 2017 solar eclipse. And then seven years later, another line goes across our country and creating an X in 2024. This was a huge deal. I never even got a chance to make, I did an Instagram post on this, but I never made a video on it. But that's why that solar eclipse was such a big deal was because to see one solar eclipse cross an entire nation is really rare. And to have another one come through and to be visible in the same places and cross is extremely rare. There, you're, you should only see a solar eclipse maybe once in a hundred years. So for Americans to be exposed to two in seven years speaks a lot about big changes going on with the United States that are out of our hands that are totally in God's hands. And you know, the United States, the United States is kind of like the new Roman Empire, the new Holy Roman Empire, like how Rome was in the old days. And Rome fell to barbarians and America could fall to barbarians as well. But America was also the new Atlantis like that's the whole point of why the founding fathers made that you know like George Washington all these guys were masons that were deep into the occult into Atlantis into bringing in the new Atlantis um, you know on top of the Capitol building there's a painting of the apotheosis of George Washington George Washington literally apotheosis means man becoming God George Washington ascending to heaven these guys were very big visionary guys and they believed that they were creating the new Atlantis with founding of America. So you never know. It could go one way or the other. Uh, we could be just, it could be the X could be crossing out the old ways and beginning the new Atlantis or it could be God is crossing out America and done with us. Who knows? Um, very, very deep stuff. A lot of the Christians were really focused on this eclipse and <clears throat> that's worthy and that's that merits good caution and reason for them because from the eclipse in 2017 to the eclipse now, it was six years, six months, and six weeks between those two points. Six, six, six. And yes, yeah, six weeks is really just one month and two weeks but if you read it like this it is six 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 uh yeah so that was pretty odd and we know that the elite love to worship these eclipses and that this country was founded by masons who can chart out when eclipses will happen so it was really weird how even the towns that the eclipse happened in were like little egypt or these weird little names and um a lot of people were expecting earthquakes and we did have like what like four major earthquakes we had in New York and on the West Coast during that time there was a lot of tension during that time the other interesting thing about the 24 is yeah 24 is X X is 24 um, and then X is 10 so two X's is 20 so 2024 could be written as XXX I just think that's very odd symbolically and then um, you know Twitter rebranded as X that was really weird the World Health Organization has been talking about a disease X that is more of a more of a win than an if. They say it's just a matter of when. I don't know. Just sharing this information with you guys. But yeah, very strange year. And the number 24 and X are really like marking this year in many ways. 2024. You know, just the numerology of that, 2024, it implies a lot of focus on resources and wealth, but then zero being like a void or a lack of them as well. Two, symbolic of money and wealth. Zero, lack. Two, wealth again. And then four, fortune, above and beyond wealth. So that right there shows you that there is a good 
investment pot potential this year. And that certainly did happen uh, with the cryptocurrency world. Um, I will make a whole video on all of that. Um, but as many of you guys know, the cryptocurrency market has gone up tremendously. And for various reasons that I'm not going to go into it all in this video because I have a whole crypto forecast video planned for Patreon members, but the Jupiter Uranus was a really big help help for the uh, financial world and the economy and the crypto world. Um, but that's just one of the main transits that are going on right now. Uh, I know that I haven't made a video in in months so there's so many things that I want to talk about I'm sure I'm gonna jump around a little bit in this video but um, and if you guys have anything you want me to talk about let me know but yeah one of the main things that I wanted to touch on was that the Jupiter Uranus is a very benevolent thing going on for like breakthroughs um, and there's there was a lot of this tension. I'm sure you guys felt all this tension building up to that solar eclipse just in the air in the collective consciousness. And then after that eclipse, like a lot of it was released. And then we just felt all the more of what I would say the Jupiter Uranus energy of just this, everything's going to be okay. Like, wow, everything just worked out. Emancipating, liberating, like freeing, you know, uh, Prometheus stealing fire from the gods is kind of what Uranus's is, is quality is about. And uh, check out the work of Richard Tarnas, Cosmos and Psyche. In fact, if you want a really in-depth Jupiter Uranus, you got the best thing on on the internet about Jupiter Uranus is the Richard Tarnas interview on the Astrology podcast by Chris Brennan. That's the best thing online about Jupiter Uranus. So I should only speak on a Vedic angle of it, like what Nakshatra that's happening in or things like that, um, which is, I believe, Kritika. Um, anyways, uh, so we've had, I, I personally, I want to do a whole video on the eclipse. There's just so many articles and things that I found that were very relevant to that Aries eclipse, but it just, it's like overwhelming. And so I just never even ended up doing it because it would have taken days to do. I still want to. If you guys would like to see that, let me know. That might encourage me to do it. But to be honest, I just, I don't know. I've done YouTube videos for a long time. I, I got kind of burnt out on it like a year ago. And not even that my channel is very successful, but I feel like I have a bit of senioritis or something about it where I just need something new to, to get me excited or whatever. Um, so I haven't been doing that many videos lately, but, and it's also because I've been focusing on teaching and uh, for this eclipse, I had, I realized that I had to stop teaching my stuff on Teachable and I've moved it all over to Patreon. So it's all a lot more streamlined now. Any Vedic astrology stuff you wanna study, $33 a month, you get access to all of it and you get a free forecast for the 12 signs. So I've already made that, it's there. And then if you, the only thing you don't get access to is the crypto financial stuff. And that's $44 a month because then if you, if you do that, you get access to all of my courses on that and also a free forecast for each month for the cryptocurrency market. So that's incredibly valuable. So I have to charge a little bit more for that. So 44 a month, still a really good deal. You can make thousands off of that 44 if you use it wisely. <clears throat> so yeah I do have a patreon now that's one of the big things I'll put a link to that below and you can follow it for free and I'd really appreciate it if you guys even follow it for free and then I also have like a five dollar option if you ever just enjoy one of my videos want to buy me a chai or something I greatly appreciate it and that was sort of my Jupiter Uranus because Jupiter Uranus was in the sign of Taurus sign of money and wealth and your resources so probably had to do with why I had this insight, you know, it's like, oh, this te teachable basically went up on their prices and then also limited the amount of courses I could teach. So I was like, screw that. I got to just find a better system. So that's what we did. Okay. So 
yeah, enough on that. But then we have uh, another, a few other really interesting things in the mundane astrology. We have Saturn and Neptune. This is a whole other thing. Uh, if you really want to go deep into that, and you, I, I'm going to make a video on it, but if you're very studious, you could check out the book Cosmos and Psyche, again, by Richard Tarnas. And it goes really in-depth to Saturn, Neptune, and what all that entails. But that sort of Saturn kind of constricts Neptune and makes us need to like have a little bit more structure to our dreams and ideals and things like that. And then Neptune in turn does some things to Saturn, but that's, yeah. So if you guys would like to, I want to do a whole video on that. If you guys would like to see that, let me know. Um, so there's that. Then there's Jupiter Uranus. That's still going on. Just because they peaked and they hit their point of exact conjunction does not mean it's over. In fact, as Tarnas explains in his interview, most of the big Jupiter Uranus things that happen happened after the peak conjunction. That speaks perfectly to crypto and Bitcoin. What's going on right there, you guys? Come on. Uh, it's exciting. So check out the Patreon. Follow that if you want to be more into that. Because it is very exciting. And there's a lot of big changes. And Jupiter is about to move into the 11th house of the Bitcoin chart. House of gains. Ooh, it's interesting. Okay, so we're not gonna, I'm not going to say anything more on that for now. But um, then the other interesting... Well, see, that's the thing. is Jupiter Uranus, it creates these synchronistic breakthroughs. So a lot of people around the world will have breakthroughs on the same thing at the same time when Jupiter Uranus is happening. Uh, for example, one of the coolest cases of this is how uh, Kepler and Galileo both accidentally confirmed Copernicus's heliocentric theory independently of each other within months of each other. That happened during a Jupiter Uranus conjunction. Many other things too, like people that invented railroads or radios or various things he goes into that in the in the interview um so we've got that and then we've got mars with rahu that's something that man like that has impacted my life in really crazy ways that i'm not even sure if i want to share with the public yet but that's been really fascinating exciting and so yeah mars rahu is going on very powerful time for just training yourself Becoming the greatest version of yourself you can be. Changing your body, your diet, because it's in Ravati, or it, the eclipse was in Ravati. That's the nakshatra of food and nourishment and cow and wealth. Once again, a big theme on food, diet, nourishment, wealth, resources, how we get the things we need, how we get our needs met. But yeah, the Mars Rahu, you'll see, a, you, you've probably noticed a lot more toxic mars energy too though in the atmosphere or in the air and that's possible um more danger more accidents people pushing too hard and then things breaking that can happen with mars rahu um and then jupiter is about to change signs jupiter is about to go into gemini in just a few days and i made that's what a lot of the forecast is that i made for the patreon for the 33 a month one so I made a whole forecast for each of the signs, really emphasizing that. But yeah, Jupiter finally is going to leave Taurus and enter Gemini. So it can end up being a very lucky year for Geminis. But Jupiter is starved in Gemini, so it's not going to be just a walk in the park. Um, because Jupiter is going to be getting hurt by Mercury. And this is something that... What's fascinating is in Western astrology, they don't have Avashtas, so they think Jupiter and in, in, they probably think Jupiter and Gemini is going to be great, and it will be in some ways, and for Gemini's it will be great in many ways. But there will also be certain themes going on, um, like people just being caught up in the minutia of things and not being able to focus on their real purpose, which is Jupiter. Jupiter starved in Gemini because Gemini is about experimenting, investigating, trying different things. Jupiter is intuition and wisdom and guru. Jupiter doesn't need to experiment. Jupiter just knows. Like, Jupiter is my ruling planet, my Atmakarika, and I have it starved by Mercury too. So I've had a lot of experiences with this where the world will try to 
tell you to research and investigate and try this or try that or do Facebook ads or do this or go here and if Mercury is the planet that's helping you then it maybe does help to experiment or just to know but if you've got if you've got more of a Jupiter thing you just know what you're meant to do trust that follow that forget the rest you know let the Gemini people go googling things all day long you know uh, Thor Indra Jupiter the guru the guru just knows through experience and it has an inner voice it trusts its inner voice it has that lightning bolt inspiration Indra's lightning bolt coming through or Zeus you know and his thunderbolt so Jupiter has a purpose, and he already knows what he needs to do, and Jim and I can just totally distract him with, oh, look at this, look at that, oh, we can go out here, let's go to this party, let's do that. Oh, I need to get gas, now let's go to the gas station. No, why don't we just, oh, now I'm talking to a friend, now I'm on my phone, I just spent the last hour talking on my phone about meaningless crap, and I didn't end up writing the book that I needed to write today, or whatever. That's Jupiter getting starved by Mercury. Of course, there's a lot of different inflections of it, that's one aspect of it. All right, well, you know, maybe this is enough for now. I uh, just wanted to, hadn't made a video in months, so hope you guys missed me. <laughs> Let me know if you have any, just any feedback. That's the thing, I kind of stopped making videos because the last few videos I made, just nobody really comments, no really crickets. I've already got my own work to do. I'm not gonna, you know, spend a long time doing videos and then just get crickets and have nobody hear back or reply back or anything. So if there's something that you guys want to know about, share comment like whatever subscribe engage with my channel um <laughs> and i might make a video about it because i am one of those people who actually replies to comments and reads and genuinely cares what you guys are listening or taking in from these videos i already have been i'm always booked up with readings i've done enough of that so i don't need to keep doing these videos necessarily but i would i'm just a very like I need other people. I need the interaction of the public. I want y'all, I want to know what y'all are resonating with, what y'all are not, all these sorts of things. Um, and I'm just, yeah, I just like to, I work, like I get better at astrology through that, through hearing the feedback, through knowing these things. So yeah, what would you guys like me to talk about? Let me know. I'm open to it. I'm usually not, not saying that sort of thing and just say whatever I want to talk about. Um, yeah. So anything you guys want me to talk about, let me know. Or if not, I'll just kind of keep making videos about, you know, or just not even planning anything like this. I didn't really plan this one out. It just kind of came out. All right, thanks, you guys. Please like, subscribe, whatever. Okay. Jay Baba.